Now, basic supplementation. We have what I fondly call the big four. You know, the vitamin C God might strike me down right now, strike me dead. But magnesium is the most important thing for you to take in large amounts on a regular basis. Why? Because nothing can substitute for magnesium. If you're low on magnesium, nothing else fills the bill. Now, what does magnesium do? Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker, so it helps keep from feeding more calcium into the cell and increasing intracellular oxidative stress, which is the primary way that cells get sick and stay sick. Okay, and the other things associated with calcium, calcification, magnesium dissolves those calcium deposits. Also, cal magnesium as a mono supplement, if you were just taking magnesium and nothing else, I, I don't recommend that. There are lots of things you should take, but as a mono supplement, it decreases all-cause mortality. It decreases your chance of death from everything. Now, how can something decrease your chance of death by everything, about, from everything? Because it positively impacts every cell of your body. Otherwise, it couldn't, positive, it couldn't save you from lupus just as readily as it would save you from heart disease or cancer or stroke or you name it. Vitamin D3, very similar. Uh, in importance to magnesium because nothing can substitute for it. So I would actually put <laughs> magnesium and vitamin D3 above vitamin C. Vitamin C, we all pretty much know, at least in this room, what vitamin C does for you. But the only reason it's number three rather than number one is that other antioxidants, to a limited degree, could compensate for vitamin C deficiency, okay? Obviously, you want all of these, but I'm just trying to give you a little ranking, if you will. And then vitamin K, K2, which helps mobilize calcium. Think about this, each one of these, one, two, three, and four, individually and independently decrease your chances of dying from any disease. So they all positively impact all of your cells. Lysine and proline, uh, that's something that Rath and Pauling put together and I think the evidence is very strong since cardiovascular disease is such, still remains such a big killer that it's good to include these in a basic regimen that allows you to either keep plaques from building up or help mobilize pre-existing plaques. But remember, or learn, those plaques exist because of oral cavity toxicity. I'll just give you one aside here that's, I think, pretty overwhelming. I'm gonna tell you it's very clear cut, the data to show that over 90% probably over 95%, and very possibly that ridiculous number 100% of heart attacks are due to oral pathogens. They did a study in which they rotorooted atherectomy, existing coronary atherosclerotic plaques in 34 different people. Then they analyzed them with polymerase chase reaction, PCR testing, for oral pathogens, they found a multitude of them, bacteria, viruses, fungi, all typical for gum and tooth infections. They found them in 34 out of 34 patients. I'm no mathematician, but I think that comes to 100%. And let me tell you, think about your coronary artery. What business do oral pathogens have being in your coronary artery? Okay, inflammation of your coronary artery, which my 
uh, cardiology colleagues now finally acknowledge is the cause of 100% of heart disease. Technically, that's correct. They just don't want to ask what caused the inflammation to start. Inflammation does not start for no reason at all. It only starts because you consume antioxidants. What consumes antioxidants? Prooxidants and toxins. <clears throat> so, omega-3, mixed to cofferols, B-complex, very important, don't neglect your iodine, potassium iodide. Thyroid function, supported correctly, helps everything, ignored, hurts everything, okay? If you leave yourself minimally hypothyroid, you will undermine the effectiveness of all I'm saying enormously. Okay. No. You took five away from me. Don't give me that. How about this? Okay. <laughs> so, there's no fixed optimal supplementation protocol. I give you what I consider to be the basic foundational supplements. And I gotta tell you, there's a ton of great supplements out there, but there's only so many things you can put in your stomach. And for most people, there's only so much you can afford. So, and everybody has a little bit of a different need, okay? 